Welcome back to Dummy Boy Finance. I'm Dummy Boy, and in this video, I want to go over the blockage of the Suez Canal and how I'm personally going to capitalize or try to capitalize on this situation. So, if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, there was a huge container ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, and so this is kind of what it looks like right here. We're looking at it right here. Let's play this video so you guys have a quick little little glimpse of what's actually happening here. And this is a huge ship with a lot of consumer goods on it. In the stern kicked out and kind of almost like power slide across the canal and wedged itself on the western side of the canal. So you have a you basically have a 1300 foot vessel that's across a thousand foot canal. And so through the Suez Canal, you have about 10 to 12% of global trade that goes through that passage annually. And so it is a huge route that a lot of these ships take to get us the products that we use today. And so there was this overhead satellite that showed that the captain of this ship drew a penis in the water before it got lodged here in the canal. And so all of that stuff aside, how can we as investors make money off this? And so the reason why I want to talk about this blockage is because I was personally introduced to the shipping sector last year in 2020 when these future contracts for WTI crude actually went negative. And so people were actually paid to take the oil off the hands because as soon as the pandemic hit, the need for oil dropped and so a lot of the oil was used as floating storage and a lot of the tankers at that time were getting absurd amount of rates just to hold this oil as floating storage and so their rates spiked which corresponded to share price appreciation in these tankers and so back in that time i had a personal bundle of frontline dht and nat as personal holdings and so after having those three holdings i personally started to do a lot more research in this space and then i did end up selling all three of those positions to buy stng and those of you who have been following me for a while know why i love stng and so stng became my best pick out of this entire situation and so i was exposed to the shipping sector for about a year so I'm not saying I'm a professional by any means. I just have a year of experience in this space. I know there's tons of volatility when it comes to tankers. And I also do know what I want to look for in tankers. And so that brings me here to the website on NAT.BM. And so if you guys type in NAT.BM, you'll be able to find weekly tanker rates for a variety of ships. And, and so on this site, you have two separate carriers. You have the crude carriers and you have the clean carriers. These clean carriers are associated with product tankers like an STNG that are composed of LR2s, LR1s, and MRs. And then you have those crude carriers that have strictly crude oil like your DHT, your NAT, your front lines with VLCC, Suez Max, and Aframax. And so if we're just looking at the 2021 year to date rates, you can see clearly that the clean carriers, LR2 and LR1s have had better rates and that has correlated with STNG share price going up. And so here we are now after the Suez blockage, we're looking at what happened this week. You can see rate spikes have been going pretty nicely. You have Suez Maxes higher than we've seen them in a while. Aframax is also higher than we've seen them. LR2s across the board, we are seeing substantial jumps in our rates. And so if we just compare these to the previous week, you can see we're already starting to get a slight uptick, but the Suez Canal blockage just increased. And so why are these earnings and these rates increasing? You just have to see it logically. If there's a blockage through a main passageway, ships have to take a different route now to get to the same destination. So it's gonna be a lot more tonnage miles and that's gonna cost a lot more money for people who are using these ships because now the ships have to go a longer route. They have to go through dangerous waters, potentially through some pirate attacks, which is gonna have more value for these ships. And these ship owners are going to charge more for the use of their ships. And so the longer this Suez blockage occurs, the rates are going to stay peaked because now we need to get these consumer goods out to people ASAP. And so we're gonna have a high demand for these ships. And so we're gonna have to take longer routes to get there, which are gonna also increase the rates. And so the big million dollar question, question is how long is it going to take 
week to fix this problem. And so if I just type in the Suez blockage, you can see it happened Tuesday, March 23rd, but you could just see optimism, but concern as Megaship still stuck in Suez, moves slightly unclear when it will reflow. And so a lot of the headlines are letting us know right now that in the short term, we shouldn't be expecting this blockage just to disappear. This might last a lot longer. And the thing with a blockage like this, this is going to cause a lot of issues, kind of like a domino effect. And so if this blockage got fixed in a couple of days, there's nothing really to look at in the shipping sector because there's no real fluctuations happening. However, the longer that this blockage continues, it's going to lead to a chain reaction of negative events that are only going to favor tanker owners. And so I say that because when you have a blockage like this, you're going to start to get port congestion. So a lot of these ships are going to start to come in wherever they're getting dispatched and and they are going to have a lot of congestion and so the longer the ships have to wait there at a port they're going to get paid to merge and so that demerge is going to add up to their bottom line numbers and so these ship owners are going to be raking in a ton of money and so they're going to make money basically off of the increased spot rates that they're going to get to move the consumer goods but then they're also going to rack up the demurrage once they're waiting at these ports that are now congested and so what we know now is that this blockage is not going to get fixed right away it is going to linger and a lot of these issues are going to last a lot longer than maybe a week or two we also know that this has put an upward pressure on tanker rates we also know that stng has been buying more of their shares and at has been buying more of their shares and so these slight little clues should give us as investors a better insight of what these tanker owners think that this market is going to look like and so if we're here trying to capitalize on some short-term momentum and so right now we're looking at nat here on the weekly time frame and there are a couple things i want to mention so first things first the drop that we had in 2020 with the market crash followed by this extraordinary run for nat and this was when the tanker rates were going crazy for these tanker owners to store this oil as floating storage and so a lot of the ships were not being used to actually transfer oil but to store them and so a lot of the supply was taken out of the market and so that helped the rates go up for a lot of these tanker owners so we saw a spike and then since that spike we have just kind of been going down because tank rates have been trash and so here we are now there is an uptick in now tanker rates and the last couple days we have seen a significant movement in price action if we're looking at our macd here on the weekly right here this crossover was extremely bullish here on january 25th and since then we have just been chugging along and right now we do have just nice beautiful bullish price movement and we shouldn't see any sort of resistance in the short term and so with all of this information why am i looking at nat nat personally i know is not the best company of the tankers by any means of imagination but NAT is the big retail name and it has the most upside just in terms of hype so you can see a lot of volatility in NAT in a short period of time because of how many eyes are on it through retail and so obviously this is not something that I want to be holding for the long term but if I'm looking at it right now we are near a support level of our channel right here if we're looking at the outlook of our longer term channel we do have a lot of upside here for our first level of resistance here near the six dollar range and then we could potentially even get up here to the eight nine ten dollar range and so do i think that's going to happen potentially if this suez blockage continues a lot longer than we anticipate and we're looking at it a month a month and a half and we're still feeling effects and the tanker owners are still feeling upward pressure on the rates that is going to help their bottom line numbers and i know nat has a small break even price because of that extraordinary run that we had in 2020 the way i'm going to play this is through options and so right now i was looking to buy options on friday for nat i saw a better opportunity in iq so i took my iq options i sold those and now i'm focusing here back onto the shipping sector because i think there's going to be some decent momentum here and some money to be made and so now that i know how the shipping sector works and it goes up really fast and it goes down really fast I'm actually going to be extremely patient and here's why. There is a gap to be filled now here on NAT chart here to about $3.38. And so you can see right here, we had a crazy jump up here on Friday. A lot of people bought calls, a lot of people saw the rate jump and people hopped in. And so we saw extraordinary upward pressure, but that means that there is this gap to be filled. And so if the next couple trading days, I see NAT continually go up, just keep running along, 
on this hype, on this momentum, I am not going to be buying into that FOMO. And the reason why is because of this gap. If we never had this gap and we had a just nice little upward movement, that would give me more confidence and more conviction to hold shares of NAT and longer term call options because that means we would have a sustained upward movement. But because we have this gap here to the downside, this will eventually get filled. It's just a matter of when. And so if on Monday we see this gap filled on NAT, that becomes a very nice opportunity to buy call options. And so the way I'm playing it is very simple. If on Monday, this gap gets filled, I will be buying call options around this level. However, if NAT continues to run up, I will eventually buy put options knowing that we are going to get this gap filled. And so I'm looking at this as I was late for the easy money to be made on NAT. So now I have to patiently wait for the next move. So I can't get caught in the fear of missing out. So if we run up, that is going to be unfortunate, but I'm just going to watch it run up. If NAT makes its move all the way up to resistance without filling this gap, then I know at this point I will be buying put options with a strike price around this 338 to capitalize on it. And so this is why I wanted to make this video today, just so those of you guys also have a better idea of why I'm making this play, why this play is going to be the biggest play I'm watching for the next couple of weeks and why I don't plan on buying any other plays until I execute here on NAT. And so I'm going to hone in on the shipping sector this coming week to find the best way to make some short term money. I also want to mention I did create a discord chat for those of you guys who want to talk to me in real time. That'll be in the description. And so you guys can join that. And it's a free discord chat for anybody who wants to join discuss ideas it'll be easier for me to give real time movements as well and so with a play that has a very short term timeline with nat if you guys are in that discord i will be letting you know when i buy either put options or call options on nat and so the table is set the suez is blocked rates are running tankers are back the shipping sector is hot and so this is how we are going to potentially play this with nat we aren't really looking at any other plays we have a long position stng and we are going to hold that for a while and so either way this plays out we have a setup either way and so that is why i wanted to make this video because this next week is going to be very exciting it's going to be very fun i can't wait to see how this whole trade plays out i will keep you guys updated on the discord if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like we are on the road to 10k subs so if you made it to this point feel free to hit that subscription button this is dummy boy finance i'm dummy boy and i'll see you guys in the next one